All right, class is in session. My fellow alumni, can you guess what today's lesson will be about? Yes, Timmy? How to beat Swarm Disaster Difficulty 5 without Ding Liu or the name? Oh, 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 I know. What are the best dice for golden gears? Uh, how to get triple drop materials more often? Well, class, those are all wonderful questions. But unfortunately, that's not today's lesson. Today's lesson is all about a certain scholar, an expert of many fields, a man with a single goal. Mr. Veritas Ratio. Ah, who? Not the ratio is an imaginary unit following the path of the hunt. He is a member of the Intelligentsia Guild. He believes that creativity and intellect are not confined to geniuses alone, and seeks to distribute knowledge to the entire universe to cure a persistent disease known as ignorance. Ratio was introduced in the 1.6 Trailblaze Continuance and plays a major role in the events that transpired. He is a fascinating character. On the surface, he is a candid, arrogant scholar who comes across as condescending. But beneath the cold alabaster mask lies a man who is truly passionate about helping others, albeit in his own unique way. I am personally quite a fond of this character, and I wanted to make a video dedicated to discussing his character because I know not many read the lore, read between the lines, or just skip the dialogue. And I find it quite disheartening because this usually leads to misunderstandings and assumptions about the character that just go against their whole ideals. So let's take a seat into the sea of knowledge. This is a Dr. Ratio recap analysis, the complexity of mundanity. So before we get into it, let's establish something in regards to Ratio. In the 1.6 livestream, Skrulin defines Dr. Ratio as someone who has a certain degree of narcissism, Though in truth, this is the only time we see Dr. Ratio defined in this manner. In his character preview, and in other areas, he is actually described as a self-centered person. And you might think, well, isn't that the same thing? No. Narcissist and self-centered are not the same thing. These words are not interchangeable. By definition, a narcissist is a person who has excessive interest or admiration of themselves. A person who thinks the world revolves around themselves. These types of people feel a big sense of self-importance, entitlement, and arrogance. They lack empathy and tend to be narrow-minded. They feel the need to be admired and tend to exploit others for their own benefit doing things along the line of manipulation and putting others down to put themselves higher. A self-centered person is similar in the sense that they have a big focus around themselves. However, the act of self-centeredness is kind of a spectrum. A self-centered person won't necessarily go as far as to harm or manipulate others, or bring other people down. In fact, some of these people can actually be altruistic. An altruistic person being a person who shows selflessness and concern for the well-being of others. In other words, unselfishness. And this is what makes the aspect of a self-centered person interesting. Because despite being self-centered, not everything they do will necessarily be done with the intent of benefiting themselves. With that being said, Dr. Ratio is not a narcissist. Ratio is a character of much complexity that calling him a narcissist is just doing him a disservice. So let's dive deeper into him and understand Ratio to his fullest. Normally, this is the part where I go to the character's backstory and upbringing to get an understanding on what made them who they are in the present. However, Dr. Ratio doesn't have such a backstory. In fact, his story seems to begin in his high school years, where a professor is writing a letter of recommendation to recommend Dr. Ratio, a teenager, to be a part of the University of Veritas Prime. According to Character Story 1, despite being a high school student, Ratio was a master in math, physics, and philosophy, and exceeded the requirements for an undergraduate degree in the university. According to him, 
Ratio managed to solve complicated math equations at immense speeds that others would struggle with. Ratio also managed to prove one of the professor's equations that not even he himself could prove. According to the character story, Ratio has eight doctorates. The subjects are the following. Medicine, philosophy, natural theology, mathematics, physics, computer science, engineering, and biology. Which, in case you don't know, on average, this can take four to six years, even up to eight, depending on the field. And considering that physics and mathematics are in the mix, then it's probably about six years. And Ratio managed to get eight of them in around the same time it takes on average to at least get one or two of these. Considering he started in high school and he's somewhere in his mid-twenties. So basically, he has lived an entire lifetime at this point. His intelligence is certainly insane, and because of this, Ratio was awarded the first class honors degree that had been left vacant for two Ember eras in the university. There were a lot of mixed feelings in regards to Ratio and his teachings. Some teachers said that they learned more from him than he learned from them. And according to the students, they can't always keep up with him due to how difficult his classes are. However, despite this, he seems to be viewed in a pretty positive light by those he teaches. Except for this guy. Mm, yeah, sure buddy, whatever you say. 1,000 disagrees and 1 agree. Which I'm guessing is yourself, because not even your mother would agree. Ratio has taught many, and as said, these are extremely difficult, with a completion rate of 3%. These students who did pass became experts in their fields. So it's safe to say, Ratio is an absolute genius without a doubt. But Ratio is also more than just a genius. He's a scholar, a teacher, and a doctor. But most importantly, he's a man with a mission. And here's where we get into the ideals and philosophies that define Dr. Ratio and his actions in the present. At the end of the 1.6 story, Scroom confronts Dr. Ratio and it turns out he was involved with the moving of the missing researchers. To resume, Dr. Ratio had gotten into the space station to take the phase plane, presumably already aware about Dugan Prino's plans to cause chaos and destruction. However, during this endeavor, he had stumbled upon Ruin May's experiments and decided to stick around and see what was up, and realized that it wasn't that great. When Trailblazer first meets Ratio, he tells us that our goals are roughly aligned, but since we were there, he would let us handle it. However, if we were to fail, he would have put a stop to some avoidable misfortunes. So it seems that if things would have gone wrong, Ratio would have intervened. Good to know. So Ratio would end up interfering with Duke Inferno's plans by moving the researchers, which according to him, if he would not have done so, they would have ended up being space waste, floating past the windows. So in essence, Dr. Ratio saved these researchers. But here comes the big question. Why would Ratio do any of this? In Ratio's mind, the answer is simple. He wanted to teach them a lesson, them being the members of the space station. Dr. Ratio is a very particular person. He cannot stand idiots, fools, nor foolishness. And he has made it his goal to spread knowledge across the places he can to stop this hoping to cure idiocy. The space station is full of foolishness and mediocrity. People who do nothing and simply backseat, leaving everything to the geniuses and higher-ups to handle, while they sit on their ass only able to criticize what they do, but never contribute to improving it. We see this firsthand in the story. At first, when I saw these messages, I asked myself, what is the point of these? 
Why do we have to see these guys just whine and whine and whine and whine? Oh, what is the point of them? But by the end of the story, this all made sense. The writers wanted to show us firsthand the mentality of the common people of the station. The idiotic people that Ratio is referring to. The type of people who are ignorant and over-reliant. The type of people Ratio wanted to teach a lesson to. Ratio placed these researchers in a scenario where they are forced to think for themselves and find ways to do things on their own when the higher-ups they so heavily rely on are not around. And at first, this does sound rather cruel because though they were no longer in any real danger since Ratio had already moved them away from Duke Inferno's grasp, they still ended up being very terrified because in their eyes, they thought they were done for. However, isn't that how life is? In order to learn and grow, we have to experience, and not everything we experience will be particularly good. Sometimes we need to experience hardship or scary situations in order to gain knowledge and grow as a person. Of course, we do not need to use this as a way to justify our suffering, only to understand it and the logistics behind it. Understanding does not equal acceptance, and that's why the term agree to disagree exists. With that said, let's take a moment to put things into perspective. Horatio is intelligent. He could have saved them in a way where they would not have been frightened and all would be well and done. But then what would have happened? They would have just gone back to their usual ways, sit back on their ass, and let others do the thinking. Because they will just think, yeah, I'll be in danger sometime, but I'll just be saved by someone else again. And won't need to think for myself because I'll never be in a position where I have to. And then nothing would have changed. The ratio wanted them to learn. He wanted them to experience, to think for themselves, to gain knowledge you must experience, and he put them in this scenario as a warning that, hey, look, this can happen now, you made it out unscathed this time, but what will you do when it happens again? When the higher-ups are unable to do anything, would you just sit and wait with your life on the line? And if they want to make it out again, they will have to think and find ways to avoid these scenarios, hence developing skills and knowledge to be able to fend for themselves and for everyone else when they are on their own again. It's like school. The teacher can give you all the answers for the test and you pass. Sure, you pass, but what if the next teacher doesn't give you the answers? And you're so used to being fed the answers that you never retained any information, you never developed any skills to survive on the field of study, and so what happened? You failed. And now you must start the year all over again. However, in the researcher's case, it was something far worse than failure. It would have been death. Ratio is a teacher through and through, because even though what he does benefits him in the race of having less idiots in the world, it benefits the other person far more. And this is what he is so adamantly passionate about. In the eyes of Ratio, knowledge is a privilege, something that not everyone has, and because of such, he wishes to share the knowledge he has to others. This is his sole purpose. Ratio, despite his arrogance and self-centeredness, is actually very grounded in reality, and this is shown in the cutscene where Skrullum confronts him. He tells Skrullum about the suffering of the common folk, the path those who can't keep up with genius have to suffer through, that these lives are destined to be marked by failure. But he has a deep belief that even those whose lives are marked by failure are lives worth living. And throughout this entire thing, he sounds so passionate. He understands others 
so much and is extremely perceptive. This aspect also disproves the ratio is a narcissist claim because a narcissist tends to not have a good understanding of others and for the most part live in their own worlds distant from the suffering of others or as ratio would describe it being in their own ivory tower ratio does not live in his own world he is very self-aware of himself and everyone else he knows he is arrogant and that people do not like this about him he acknowledges every flaw he has does he change it no because it's simply who he is but as long as he's aware of this reality he can be aware of everything else to know your enemy you must first know yourself and there's one thing he is most certainly always perfectly aware of and that is that he is not perfect nor a true genius especially not in the eyes of the erudition Ratio's passionate speech about the suffering of the non-intelligent shows us that he either has experienced or has seen what it is like to be seen as mundane or mediocre. And personally, I believe it could go both ways. Ratio in the current story doesn't hide it nor sugarcoats it. He has a petty dislike for geniuses, always poking jabs on them, and sees them mostly in a negative light until proven otherwise. But it seems like perhaps there was a time where this was not the case. According to Character Story 3, Dr. Ratio's assistant tells the interviewer that Ratio never particularly mentioned ever wanting to be in the Genius Society. However, there was a day where Ratio received a letter from the IPC after a successful test firing of an anti-planetary weapon that Ratio worked on for many years. She excitedly passed on the letter, but he replied in silence. He asked her politely to leave, and through the door she heard a grim sigh, followed by self-deprecating laughter. Seeing this as a moment of realization that he probably will never be acknowledged by the Genius Society. When you max level ratio, he tells us the following. If this day I have not gained the recognition of Noose, it stands to reason that I never will at any point in the future. Meaning that even now, Ratio still does somewhat wish for acknowledgement from Noah's, but he will never be granted such. In the eyes of Noah's, Ratio does not qualify as a genius, and he is quite self-aware of it, but that won't really stop him. Ratio would end up being a part of the Intelligentsia Guild in a group called the Council of Mundanities. According to Character Story 4, it holds all of the brightest minds of the guild. People seem to go through enormous lengths and sacrifices just to catch up to the genius society. Ratio calls himself a Mundanity, and the people question as to why he may call himself such, considering his knowledge. Is it a form of submission? mockery or a declaration of war but i believe this is just ratio's reminder ratio wears the mask to spread all knowledge but once the mask is off he knows he knows he is no true genius his title as a mundanity is a symbol of who he actually is just another person but a person who wants to make a difference and has the means of doing so. Genius or not, it doesn't stop him from pursuing his goals. His path is straightforward onto his pursuit, or should we call it the hunt, for those he believes could use a lesson. He will put out the questions and the receiver will have to find the answers and make their own path. He's simply giving them the push they need to move forward. And so the bell will ring and class will come to a close. With Ratio being one of the members invited to the land of dreams, Panacone, we will hopefully get to know more about him. I'm quite curious to see how he will interact with everyone, 
especially with Aventurin since he is a member of the IPC. On another note, with the reveal of the Children of the Flame, we get some interesting bits, specifically how they each seem to target a specific path. But Erudition, the Hunt, nor the Trailblazer seem to be targeted, meaning we might end up teaming up more with Ratio down the line. After all, we did end up on pretty friendly notes with Ratio, so I really look forward to seeing how it develops. That wraps up the analysis. What do you think about Ratio? Do you like him? Do you dislike him? And if you do dislike him, at least now you dislike him while knowing all about him. I always believe if you're gonna hate something, at least hate them correctly. With that being said, if you made it to the end of the video, put a W plus ratio in the comments, leave a like if you enjoyed this or at least found it insightful, and subscribe. I will do more analysis in the future, and I also have other content like art, if that's your thing. So stick around! And with that being said, class dismissed.